Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Midweek Matters. Charlie has jinxed us. We were supposed to have the tour show, yeah. but he ran his big mouth, yeah. and it didn't happen. But we will be working on it, and we will bring that tour show. We will. At some point, either during the season or the end of the season, I've loved sitting down and chatting to some of the great tours. We've got so many other ones that we've hashed out a few ideas for, so that is to come. But Charlie jinxed us. I did we've, got, we've got an episode of Midweek Matters, which is probably pretty good because there's a fair bit happening and some things to look forward to as well. There's been quite a lot of news that's broken yeah. in the past there couple is, of though, days. But before we get into it, I just do want to bring something up. You've just farted just as we started as well. And it's not like we're in a pretty small area here. It's a, it's a bad fart as well. Is it? Yeah. And we've got no windows here well, to open. It's not smell a vision, is it? No. So, <laughs> oh, it, the, the, like, well, it's not. There's just television the, like, either. It's a podcast. Yeah, no, but there's no like it. You know, when we start these podcasts, Charlie, there is like a little bit of banter and a little bit of like, oh, you know, catching up with each other. Yeah. And the, some of the listeners like that, and and there's there's relevant information and there's irrelevant information. Yeah. Basically what you've just told us is there's irrelevant information. But it's relevant for me right now in this moment. I'm sitting here in mm. and I'm immersed in this experience, well, this well, smell. Yeah, all right. Well, th- resilience, mate. You just crack on. You you broke the table. That's not great for you <laughs> by standing on it to fix a light. Yeah. I've been me and Tony we were in, in with Brandon Smith wondering why the table is broke. Kept Poor old myself. Brandon Smith. And then you've finally admitted it. Yeah. You're, you're all well, dressed. I wasn't here last time. You're all dressed all snazzy because you've been to the <laughs> US consulate to get your visa. That's true. Shout out to the the um, the um guy who was actually working at the US consulate who listens to the bar round as well. He's a great man. Did he recognize you? He said I was listening to the bar this morning, actually. So it was we, he must have. He must have recognized. First time it's ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> did you get a picture with him? No, I didn't. Mate. I didn't. <laughs> if we did, dishing dead on you as well, obviously we're going to Las Vegas mm. and we got an opportunity to get U2 tickets at a, at a very good good price for the concert. Very good price, easily organised well. You, Wade, GI, all going to see U2. But the only issue was they're going to be general admission, so in the mosh, and you sort of viewed yourself as being too good for general admission. No. And you've said rejected the tickets instead. Now you've sent us on a sort of wild goose chase now to find other tickets. No, no, that, that, that's incorrect. So first off, we'd already started looking at tickets. There was no GA on sale. No. So, so I've uh, been looking and from the reviews or the, the, the reviews that I've seen say you need to be in one of the levels because it's all about going to the sphere and experiencing the atmosphere. You too, I mean, look, they're a good band. Would I really look at paying to go see them? Probably not, but the very fact that it's in Vegas, yeah. in the sphere, that's why I'm going. I'm going for the But experience. isn't the point of the sphere there's no bad seat in the house? Yeah, but general admission, like in the mixer, it'd be a shit fight, and I just think it's some things are worth paying for. I, a good friend of mine, like an Irish guy who I know over here, he's like, oh, you're going? Like, that's amazing. Me and my mates want to go to Vegas just for that. Yeah, right. So they just want to go for that. We're, yeah. we're getting sorted, flights, accommodation, yeah. all that jazz. Yeah, we're working over there. But I'm like, there's the main part of the cost. Like, splash out on, a, on some tickets. And I, mean, I get that. I get I get that. But it was, it was, I thought it was a bit snobby of you is all. That you're not a, you couldn't sort of be in the mosh pit. I just thought it was a little bit snobby. Did you? Yeah. And I thought the man, like you got humble beginnings, you started in Magul, Magul, however you say yeah. it. Yeah. You know, I just wonder what your granddad would think about you. Just, you know, saying that general admission was beneath you. Because I think that's the word you used was beneath you. You said I worked hard to get <laughs> Dude, this No, line. no, 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 no. <laughs> no, you like There are two types of people in this world, Charlie. Yeah. Lion tamers and lion bastards, and you are a lying bastard. <laughs> well, so, so I did not say that. What my granddad think of me? My granddad, he'd be first looking at me and going, you've got bottled water, my yeah. friend. He'd go, what, what are you doing? Yeah. He wouldn't swear. He'd be like, well, how much was that? And if I even said more than a cent, he'd be like, well, you know, it's free out of a tap. Mm. Like he, so what would he think of you so paying we, well, a lot look, for you two tickets then? The, the fact that I'm going to Las Vegas to do anything with rugby league is a side issue. He'd be more focused on the fact that I've paid for bottled water. 
you know, we probably shouldn't pay bottle water. We do have a tap here as yeah, well. Yeah, we have a tap here. And yeah. he'd be quick to point that out. He's, he's a smart man. He's dead now. <laughs> well, <laughs> he was a smart man. He was a smart man. Rest in peace. What was his name? Dan. Dan Shout Graham. out Dan. Shout out Dan. Dan Graham? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it could be on your mum's. It, it could have been. been. Yeah. yeah, but no. Yeah. Um, let's start with the trials though, Jimmy, because week two's of the trials kicks off this weekend. Um, and obviously week two of the trials, you see much more full strength sides come out. A lot of the players who haven't played in the first trial come out um, and there's some great matchups. I think one of the ones in particular that's interesting is the Sharks dogs game on Friday night at Belmore. And I think the dogs side for 2024 is really starting to take shape. You got Blake Taff at fullback. That's it. He's now playing there again. It looks like that's his spot. The other interesting thing, Drew Hutchinson at halfback. And you've also got Bronson Cherry in the centers, which to me tells me he's beaten Connor Tracy for that spot. And the other one, well, James- Connor, Connor Tracy's uh, not in the squad completely, so he's ruled out through injury. Yeah, but I think he's probably going to get first crack at it regardless, Bronson mm-hmm. Cherry, in round one. And then the other one of interest, Jamin Salmon at lock. Yeah, it, it is. It, like, yeah. And look, I have a little bit to do there with the dogs, um, but like I no knowledge of this selection i find out like everybody else and yeah it, it's really interesting i guess what i saw from them in the in the first game some people have event that spot bronson cherry was very impressive hutchison likewise um so yeah these these lads have event it and look i i think uh, it'll be interesting to see the coach has got some some big decisions to make and you know the squad's going to be rotated uh, throughout the season, season, um, maybe we'll see Crichton play some part at, at, at fullback. I don't know; it, it's yet to be seen. I think the more Stephen Crichton can get his hands on the football, the better. It is interesting that Jamin Salmon's got that lock spot, though, because I think everyone sort of assumed Josh Curran was going to come in and play that, but. Salmon can sort of play that extra ball playing role a bit better than Josh Curran can. Josh Curran's more of a sort of tuck the ball on the arm and charge forward sort of a player. I, I wouldn't. I don't but know if I'd agree got, with that. He's not got Salmon's ball playing skills. No, he doesn't. But I don't know if I'd p- uh, pigeonhole um, well, not, Josh Curran as like, or, or, or even describe him as that. Well, how would you describe him then? Jumper. I think he's, he's he's a skillful he's a skillful edge backer. Right? Yeah, but that he, plays in the middle. That can play in the middle as well. Yeah, I wouldn't say him. Up but the dur- jump. Well, during his career so far, he hasn't shown all these silky ball skills. Uh, he can pass the football pretty well. Where's he shown that? At the Warriors? Hmm. I haven't seen much of that. All right. Maybe you should but tune into we'll see. it. We'll see, mate. We'll see no, how it goes. The, the all the Warriors fans hate you. <laughs> well, he the plays for the dogs them. now, not the Warriors. Yeah. So. Um, but, so you, no, it, you think it, that's a good decision, though? Well, I don't know if it's a, if it's a good or bad decision. Like, I, it's to be determined. And this is just the team for the trial. Like, it doesn't mean it's the team for round one. No. Power Farmer Silly as well in the front row, starting yeah. with Max King. That's an interesting decision. Like we'll, we'll see how it all pans out. There's, yeah. You know, there's um, still another two weeks away. Liam Knight, I think he's injured as well. So we'll Sam see. Hughes looked really good in that first trial. Yeah, he did. He he he, um, he was really impressive, and I know he's been working really hard at his game, and the the staff have put a lot of work into him. Um, he's you know, played a handful of games, and he's, um, if he gets a little bit of luck and uh, keeps applying himself, how he go, how how he's going, you'll you'll have a, a great career. Another interesting selection from a different side. Ryan Madison is 18th man for the Parramatta yeah. Eels, uh, and Finny Fuwaki as well. Like, yeah, not playing for the Cowboys. No, like out of the, I guess the, the 17. No Lay Lua in there because he's moving to the Dragons. So yep. I think that speaks to the depth of the Cowboys. The, the no Ryan Madison one is really interesting. Um, yeah. I can't get, can't put my finger on that one. I mm. don't understand why you wouldn't be in the 17. But again, maybe we're just, it's just a trial. No, I don't, I think you're underestimating trial. I think you really are. The, uh, these 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 are signs you've of a team you've been that, sucked in th- i'm you've not been being sucked, sucked in, in. no like, okay if these trial games weren't being televised i don't uh, i don't even think you'd know but you know when i first started at nrl i don't think you named the team really for trials no mm. i think you just you just lobbed up 
I'm yeah, pretty well, sure. I think I feel like every trial started getting televised like three or four years ago, didn't it? No, I think it was only last year when they brought in the the um, the preseason challenge comp, challenge. Yeah, thing. right. I think before that, it may have only been the charity shield. Maybe my memory's confusing me. But sorry, I shouldn't say like lobbed up. I think it was like uh, they get a feel for like what the opposition, the coaches that speak, what sort of team are you going to put out? How many players? Mm. Like I think you had to register the team, but I don't think there was like teamless Tuesday. Yeah, well now it's massive because there's super coach. And like so much people look at these this preseason game, build mm. the whole team around what's happening yeah, these you, two and weeks. You, and you've been you've been sucked in. I, I know, I know that there's a lot of I like, re- so, you, so you don't think Hutchinson, named a halfback again, is in the front is the front runner for the seventh spot I, of the second. I think he's in the frame, but I think I, I don't know. I, I think look, I've got the philosophy of like people you, perhaps you're overlooking the trials. Like sorry, over overthinking it with the trials you 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 know what i think you're worried about you because and i know that a lot of our listeners are in this predicament where the super coach draft is this weekend i've just had mine last weekend yeah uh, well yeah. and and you know you, you're you're so you've had yours and i think you're looking at it and going i've made the right call there but, but, well i like, got hutchinson yeah, but i think no, if you had hutchinson you would be happy that you've, you've got, got hutchinson. have you gone with madison I haven't got Madison, no. no. But like, I'd be worried if I did have Madison. Yeah, I, be, I, why would they not put him in the 17 if he was going to be in the 17 for round one? Like, you look at the look at the team they've named. They've got... What's their forward pack? They've got Ring Camagillo and Junior Bolo. They're mm-hmm. the front rowers. They're yeah. going to be their front yeah. rowers for round one. Sean Lane and Bryce Cartwright, the edge back rowers. They're going to probably be their back rowers for round one. Jermaine Hopgood, he's probably going to be the lock round one. Then you've got a bench of Brendan Hands, Wiramu Greg, Offa Hengawi, and Tuolangi. Tuolangi was quite impressive in Parramatta's trial last week. For me, that is the 17 at this stage, which I think is a huge call to leave Ryan Madison out over uh, Wiramu Greg. But see, I don't, I don't reckon it is. I reckon Ryan Madison plays. Well, I'll have, a little place to, I'll have a bet with you right now about that Hutchinson is the halfback for round one. Well, hang on, but I never said. But but you're saying that it's not a sign of anything. Yeah, but I didn't say it's, I don't I don't th- I'm not saying that it doesn't mean he's not going to play seven. Mm. I'm saying I don't think you should read too much into it. I think there's a pot. I think that in some clubs, genuinely, I think the Bulldogs. I think there's a few spots that are still up for grabs. Yeah, I think with the including fullback. Yeah, yeah, I do. I think Taft's impressed from what I've heard, but you know you've you've got you've got obviously I was really impressed with Connor Tracy last season. And in previous seasons, I think he's a great player at the back. And obviously, you've got the the big signing, the main signing, with you know the possibility of playing him in arguably the most influential position on the park. So, Cam sorrello has got a few um, ideas to toy with. A man who's got a couple extra ideas now to toy with is Shane Flanagan as well because they've signed Luciano Lelua. It's a three-year deal, and I think Dragons fans... I'm probably going to be pretty happy they've got a player like Luciano come over because they haven't been able to bring a lot of players in. But it is big, big money. It's a three-year deal. So this year, because there's only eight months left in the year for the footy, you've got five. He's got a five hundred thousand dollar deal, and then next year and the year after, it's nine hundred grand a year. So nine hundred thousand dollars a year for Luciano Lelua. Yeah. So the Cowboys have already paid the four months. Four months. Yeah. And then they'll pay a couple more. No, now the, the well, now the dragons just take over. take over. Yeah, because he was on that same amount of money up in North Queensland. Oh, right. So they're just taking over his deal and giving him two years extra, and giving him two years extra on nine hundred. Yeah, yeah. It, look, it's a lot of money for a back row. Like it is a lot of money mm. for an edge back row. Mm. Like he that would put him in the same sort of category as Olakawatu. For Fita, nearly. For Fita, yeah, not quite up there. Schuster. Yeah. Who who else would be? Uh, Nanai's on good money. Yeah. Um, you've got Angus Crichton still on good money at the Roosters, even though he's not probably not going to start this mm. year. There's a bunch of back rows on great money. Kikau. Yeah, Kikau be on good money. Mm. He's right up there now. He's about one of the top played back rows in the game. Mm. Yeah. Like, has he done enough to earn that price tag? I don't know. Do you think it's a bit of a, a panic buy maybe because they feel like they need to get a kill? It feels like all off-season we've been talking about who are they going to get, who's the player that can move a needle, and Luciano's name's popped up and they've just gone, we got to get him. I, I I don't think Shane Flanagan would say panic buy. It's, he just needs to get a deal done for someone. I think with a player like Luciano, it, his, 
his greatest strength is probably his creativity. So, you know, if you look at um, the creative aspects of, of the players at the Dragons, like they probably lack that little bit of creative spark where Luciano can give them that on an edge. He he plays that ball playing back rower. So that that's what he needs to bring and he, he slots. I think it's a win-win. It's a win for the, the Cowboys. They remove him off the salary cap. Like I said, Finney Fiuaki. Um sorry, Finney Finney Fiuaki not in the again, probably reading too much into it, into the in the seventeen. Um because they've got Helam um, Lukey. Helam Lukey and Jeremiah Jeremiah Nanai. Mm-hmm. So look, you throw Luciano Leilu in there, like how much game time is he realistically gonna get? Plus he's on obviously on big money as well. Yeah. So how does that all work with them? So they lose him, but it's not panic stations too much. That Interesting as well. Yeah. Jason Ta- Jason Tamalolo named at front row. Mm. Him and Ruben Cotter might swap a little bit, but yeah. yeah. Be- um, Speaking of Ruben Cotter, though, that, that's one of the main reasons why Luciano Le Lewis gone as well is because they need to upgrade Ruben yeah. Cotter and keep him. So they need to get Luciano off the books. And the other one is the Dragons have come in and put a $600,000 offer in for Finny Fuwaki. Um, that was that they put a $600,000 per year offer in for him. So I think by getting rid of Luciano and sending him to the Cowboys, they're thinking we can now keep him yeah. and upgrade Cotter. Yeah, well, that makes sense from a Cowboys perspective. I think you, know, you look at the um, the Dragons back row, there's Jaden Sewer on one side, then you've got anyone between Eisenhuth, Ray Fatalamarana, Benny Murdoch, Masilla, like Luciano is... Walk-up like, starter yeah, for that. he's a yeah. walk-up starter. So he's not worried about his game time or anything like that. It, he just... Uh, um, slot that slot into that role and look he he's obviously he started at the club i played with him um what's he like personality wise he's, he's, he's a really good fella like re- very different from um his brother bj from what i can gather like in terms of personality types for, again this is only going off what i've seen on the field um from bj lulu i don't really know him but you'd you'd be like geez how are these how are these two the same <laughs> cut from the same cloth kind of thing um yeah, so very different in sort of temperament, but he's a good, really good lad. But I think, like, you know, we've seen the same thing happen to many other players. David Fafita for one, uh, Josh Schuster, big price tag, moving teams or staying at teams. Like, the, you know, even Ben Hunt at the Dragons, like his price tag followed him around. And whether you like it or you don't, you agree with it or you don't, it is part of it. So, you know, look, when you when you're on that figure, whatever position you, you you're under extra pressure and even more scrutiny, and and that's that's a, a difficult thing for any young athlete to to navigate and manage. Is he the signing they needed? Look, he ticks a lot of boxes for what they'd be looking for: creative, add to their attack. You know, obviously part of that is going being in and around points. So he ticks a lot of boxes. Like, like is he the, the top retro on the players that they've been the, the the absolute kill that they're going for? Like, probably not. Like you you look at something like Joey Marnie would have been top of the shopping list. Mm-hmm. Tommy Deard and up there in the shopping list. You know, there's probably a, a few. Um, Jerome Luai in on the shopping list. So that spine player, that elite spine yeah. player is who they're Yeah, is where they after. where they be at 100%. Yeah. Like, yeah. Of course. Well, another player, Jimmy, who is going to be leaving the NRL at the end of this year. You spoke about Joe Marty there, but Jared Rear Hargraves has joined the Roosters list of departing players. He's going to he's going to looks like he's going to go to England and play for whole KR. Yeah, I did see that. Um it's funny Jared doesn't particularly enjoy the media side of things, does he? No, does I'd he, like to get him on he, here. Um, he penned like an open letter. <laughs> I didn't do the press conference or anything like <laughs> yeah. that. Anything. You know, I, I I admire him for that. Just he's no nonsense. Um, I think he'll go down as one of the greatest front rows of a generation there. Um, the way he's played the game for such a long time, he he's never, never changed with how he plays and what he brings 
I don't really think he cares too much about people's opinion of him. But um, yeah, it, he, anytime I played against him, it, I knew it was always on. Like, yeah, it's not a fun sight having him <laughs> charging at me. You just have to stand your ground and let's go. Was he one of those players you really looked forward to going up against? I think looking forward like is, the contest of it all. Yeah, there, there was a little bit of that. Like I, I need to try and get the better better of him. It, the, the the biggest respect you can pay to Jared is you want, you you always need to know where he is on the field. So if I was taking a carry, you know, I'm not looking for him or like taking my eyes off the football, but I'd want to know where he is. Mm. So he doesn't come and get you from the side. Just well, you, you. <laughs> you don't want to get blindsided. Do yeah, you? no, they're, they're they're the worst type of. Col- I think when you look at the worst type of collisions that you know you want to be, you can be involved in. It's kickoff ones can be pretty bad, but you sort of see what's in front. It's the blind side one, and sometimes you'd see Jared at C defender, and you just go, ah, I'll just head you in, just just go in because you don't want to give him a free shot on you. You'll, you'll you know, break your ribs. Mm. But I, but I, but I did I did enjoy the chance. He was such a tremendous competitor played against him for when he was playing for New Zealand we had some real battles there yeah he'll he'll, he'll be missed he's he's one of the not the few characters in the game that is sort of plays that pantomime villain yeah I love it but, like but he, there's not there's not many like him that are still around there's not many pantomime villains yeah in the in the NRL these days, it's a good opportunity for someone actually to come in and take that role as a front rower and be that sort of alpha villain type. Mm. Well, Victor Radley plays it a little bit, but not uh, the same style. Like, Jared, the, what about yeah. when Jared's like pulling his shorts up and then like yeah, pushing his foot back like a bull that's about to like yeah. charge at something? Yeah, there, I, I, I think Lindsay Collins plays a very aggressive style as well, but, I but he's quite mild mannered yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know who could take that take on that role. Payne Haas again is quite mild yeah. mannered in his, even though he's an unbelievable dominant player. Yeah, the, the, you're right. There isn't there isn't too many like him, and I think we should enjoy him for um, for every game that he manages to play this year. It's be a big change in the guard when when he moves on. When you think of some of the leaders that the Roosters have lost, yeah, I think one of the greatest compliments that Jared receives in, in 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 general from the NRL is when you hear people talk about how he prepares and how he play and how he trains and gets ready for practice and the influence he has on his teammates around him like that's that's huge and obviously you get judged as a player on, and, and as a team and as a club on the 80 minutes that you produce at NRL level on a weekend but there's so much that goes into that and from you know, if you believe what you hear and you read, Jared's a a huge driver of, you know, the 99.9% of things that go into that performance of a weekend. Mm. And obviously on that 0.01% of when you're actually playing, he, he has a fair go as well. Yeah. But he's so important and so influential um, away from the 80 minutes which is a huge compliment you always hear players say like Jared brings it at training Brandon Smith he's he talks like, about him all the time Jared brings it at training yeah like and look I, I know what it's like playing in the middle I, I didn't always bring it at training like for, for the physical side of stuff I I used to dial it up dial it down like I didn't enjoy especially towards the back end that contact in training I'd dial it down I'd you know looked after and numerous times because look I, I needed to turn it on and turn it off I didn't want to you know waste all my uh, good tackles at, in, in a practice session I wanted to keep them for the weekend but Jared by all by all accounts even yeah. that World Cup that we had Brandon Smith and Renato Militalo in here talking about it, they mm. talk about Jared wasn't playing but he yeah. was still massive for bringing everyone together mm. and and even I mean I think him and she's pushing their beds together shows that he's probably kind of a funny sort of a guy yeah, as well. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know if, you, if people miss that story. Basically, Brand Smith and Jared are roommates everywhere they go together, and they push their beds together to make one big bed. Make of that what you will. Yeah, make of that exactly. What you will. <laughs> it, yeah, it's fucking weird. Yeah, if we're gonna be I, honest. I, I look, I, I'll level with you, Charlie. It, it, it. Curiosity got the better of me around what and yeah, like I, just, I don't get it. No, like they, they, oh, he makes a bigger bed, but. It's just it doesn't mess. make a bigger yeah, bed. No. It just means you're sharing beds now. Yeah. And if you guys want to share beds, power to you. All power yeah. to you. Oh, look, 
Just hopping the same one. Yeah, just hopping the same one. Just yeah. get a bit close. That's yeah. the whole point of sharing. That's the whole point. Spoon yeah, yeah. yeah, get a bit closer. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, look, maybe that maybe that's the one thing against Jared is that he pushes his beds together to get closer to yeah. cheese. Uh, interesting on the, the link with Hulk KR. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think Willie Peters is the coach there. I'm not sure if he has right. a relationship with him, but, you know, to if I thought he'd go anywhere, I thought it'd be Catalans with, because I know Steve McNamara has a relationship with him from his time at the Roosters. And Robbie used to coach there. Yeah. I I don't know. I, it, it'd be a big call to for Jared to go there for one year. Like, just how much has he got left in the tank? And you, you know he's going to go a massive all-in on this year. Mm. It is it worth it to go? For the club, do you mean? Well, or for him to go for, as a for person? Him, for him to go as yeah. a person. Like, and, yeah, it's a, it's a big decision I, I, from recollection. He's got quite a young family as well. So it'd be a big call for him to go. Be Maybe a, how, this year's could, how this year goes could dictate that. I mean, yeah. If the Roosters go on a sort of dream run and win a premiership, he might say this is a perfect way to yeah. go out. You never know. yeah. Because it's not confirmed that he's going no, there or no. not. It's just that option was he might just end up retiring. But, but, it, but for it was interesting that he he did say he's he's retiring from the Roosters. He's not retiring from the game. Yeah. So it's like this year will be my last at the Roosters, which yeah. sort of like indicates that he's open to it, which would be a huge coup. Mm. And he's the, the same as Manu. He would never play for. He won't play after no, now. God, he, the no. careers had the Roosters. I know he didn't start out the Roosters, but the careers had their no, game. He, he play ain't for going anywhere else. else. Well, from one Kiwi legend to another, then Jimmy Stacy Jones has ta- has been given the New Zealand coaching job, being chosen yeah. over Wayne Bennett. I know. I was surprised at this. I thought Ben Toss was nailed on, as yeah. we used to call him in, in England camp, and he's obviously been in and around the the Kiwi camp before, but. Big call from um, Rugby League New Zealand. Yeah, so the, Stacey League. Jones, who's at the assist, he's assistant at the Warriors at the moment. Mm. Um, one of New Zealand's greatest ever players, if not their greatest ever player in rugby league. I mean, growing up, he was just like he was the Warriors when I was yeah. a kid. He was New Zealand. Stacey Jones, just an unbelievable player. Yeah, I mean, I guess in terms of coaching experience, it's it's all relatively new, and you can only assume there was like an interview process there and. Yeah, if the power brokers at New Zealand Rugby League thought that Kiwi identity was was going to better serve the playing group, maybe Brandon Smith had a word with them <laughs> because obviously he was shitting himself, wasn't he? When he spoke to us, he was like, he wasn't exactly Wayne doesn't in, like him. endorsing Wayne. It was like late we found out he, he doesn't think that Wayne Bennett likes him. So maybe Cheese has pulled a few strings. I don't know. For, for me, I, I, yeah, I, it's it's a it's a shock. It really is. I, I thought Wayne was was nailed on. I know about his passion for the international game, not just you know Australia, that being his native country. Um, but yeah, they obviously see something in Stacey Jones. Um, the big news out of that, though, is that Wayne Bennett is actually being now linked to an Eels coaching director job. So we spoke about a couple of weeks ago. There's a chance. The, the original plan was Christian Wolfe to take over next year as the Dolphins coach. Yeah, that was the, the how the front, the franchise was going to begin yes. two years with Wayne in charge and then yeah, Christian, Christian takes, takes over. over the chat on that has gone very quiet which has made people assume that maybe Wayne's going to go again at the Dolphins but if he was to go to the Parramatta Eels as a coaching director if you're Brad Arthur I think you'd be getting a bit nervous because Wayne Bennett is coaching director could easily slide into your coaching spot very yeah. quickly it, look it, it Wayne's not Wayne's not going to not coach mm. So Wayne Bennett will be coaching and he'll be doing something. Like he's going to stay in the game. I don't know what a coaching director looks like. Well, Tim Sheens did it for a little bit and then ended up taking over as the Tigers yeah. coach. Like it's almost a pathway. To, I mean, it's not to have an American um, reference, but in the NBA, Doc Rivers was an advisor for the Milwaukee Bucks to, to their coaching staff, and then the coach is sacked, and he was the coach yeah, about forty that, games later. That, that, that's like, fundamentally what happens. Yeah, and look, like but Brad Arthur, he is the most experienced Eels coach of all time. He's been the longest serving coach, so you know he knows what he's doing. He's took them to a grand final, like. It's not like he's he's this rookie coach that needs experience. Like, you know what? Maybe if the Tigers and he and he was helping Benji out, 
you go, oh, that sort of makes sense. Mm. But for the eels with the, the place that they're in, like it, look, and this is just reports, but mm. if that comes to fruition, like, you know, Brad, Brad Arthur, he just it, the writing's on the wall. Yeah. Like it's not looking good. Like it may turn out to be all rosy and Brad, like Brad's got, to be fair, Brad's got a big job on his hands this year. Mm. Like a massive job. They went from grand final to out the eight. Like he's probably one of the coaches who's under the most pressure. Absolutely. Coming into season 2024. Because before that grand final year, I mean, he, he was always under pressure every well, year. Whenever, that, that, even when they made that, the grand final, he was under pressure. Yeah. Do you remember that year? They were like, what are they talking about whether they were going to sack him? Yeah. And they were like in the top four. Yeah. Like obviously you, you can't believe everything that you hear, but. I don't know if the Eels job would be that appealing to Wayne. Just could, just with the trajectory of where they're going. would I feel like if a job like the Bunnies job became available, it would be more appealing to Wayne. Oh, he's obviously got that history there of coaching, but I think they're more on an up, upwards trajectory, whereas I think Eels might be on the downward trajectory. So the person that takes over after Brad Arthur is probably going to have to have a tough rebuild on their hands. Yeah. Obviously, we've got you know the potential for the... 18th team coming in as well when that mm. happens. Valandis has already said that he wants Wayne to be the coach yeah. of that team as well. So, you know, how can, you know, if Wayne has a bit of a stop gap to, to fill his cup, but yeah, I, I, I don't, I, I can't envisage the South's job becoming available. I, I don't think South will, will be in the position to let that happen. I think they're going to have a great year this year as well, mm. South. But look, there's a there's a whatever happens over these next seven months 17 teams i guess well there's only there's one winner you know they're successful maybe the rest aren't however you look at it every team in that 17 are aiming for the eight mm. so nine teams fail so nine teams have a good look at themselves internally maybe you get an external reviewer in so of all those nine teams, whoever they are, they're all going to be looking for, potentially looking for change. And if Wayne Bennett is out of a job, they'll all be, any It'll of those, any of those teams that go looking will, will be looking at Wayne. The exceptions being maybe a Melbourne or, you know, there, there are one or two others that maybe just go, well, look, it's probably not not for us. Penrith. Arvin Cleary is going to yeah. be there as long as he wants. So there's not, yeah, there's nine teams if they were to, you know, if there's some that have this massive fall off a cliff, maybe they go, oh, we don't need to change anything. Like South did last year. Yeah. Um, you know, like the Cowboys did last year. But there'd be plenty of teams that if they don't make the eight, the nine of them, that they'll be having a look. And if Wayne's services is available, you'd be mad not to consider him. Peter Volandis then, Jimmy, he's... um enacted his three-year extension, so he's going to be sticking around for a few more years. However, in, in his first interview, he's basically said he might not see out his term. Why? <laughs> I don't know why. I just, don't know just why. Stay. It's just easier if he stays. Does rugby league need Peter Volandis? He certainly seems to have had uh, a positive impact on the game. Yeah. You know, you look at the, the, the numbers, participation, viewers, financials, yeah, it's been, and obviously was a a big driver of change through, and a big driver of the game itself through one of its most difficult challenges in its history with, with you know, how it navigated the, the pandemic. Yep. So you've got to give him all the credit he deserves, and, and he does deserve that credit yeah. for, for, you, you know, analyzing and look, Peter's great strength is, is getting shit done. He gets shit done. Yeah. And, you know, some people could argue that that leadership style isn't for them or it's not the, it's not what's going to best serve a particular organization or a particular team or, you know, a particular a area of a business. But I think the way he operates is has been great for the game and a leadership style like that often leads to great financial results and if yeah. you look at the nrl for last year which it achieved its greatest ever revenue 701 million mm. for 2023 it's huge it's massive that's a nearly a 20 percent increase on 2022 
And there, during that COVID time, basically the talk was if rugby league stops for another six weeks, the game could be broke. Well, since mm. 2021, they've had over $160 million in profits. Yeah. Well, arguably he, now the, the sport in the best position in Australia. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And he's, you know, you, you look back at some of the changes he's made, that they haven't all been perfect. You know, the six again rule, he was a big part of that. Um, obviously, the, the, uh, you know, the business side, the, the financial and the business side of, of the game is affected by the product. And he's made some, some changes that, you know, have, have obviously impacted uh, viewers, watchers, which then therefore in, in affect revenue. Now, some big changes this year, mm. which I think, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But, you know, games like the, the product itself, there was a few on the weekend that will need some, some figuring out. Mm. I think there was a downtown penalty at the Dragons game, which I think the guy that played the ball was penalised. A few leg lifts, but you know the the I think you know Peters w will see that and uh, and and act accordingly. Mm. And there's some very smart footy minds in involved, yeah, involved that, in that as well. Yeah. There, a lot of the time, people sort of don't forget that Wayne Pierce is heavily involved. Yeah, in there, one of the, yeah, you know, the a, greatest a, yeah. players of all time. Yeah, and it's funny. Like th I was talking to someone about this the other day about how like games change and like how it's changed from when I started playing. Like in like I always use the example of well, if you had a fan from the '80s and you you told them you, there was going to be a big screen at every single game, they'd laugh. Like what? Mm. Like now, I saw it the other day. I was like, "Fuck!" When I first started playing, imagine that we'd be doing breathing exercises. I'd be like, <laughs> "You are breathing? I, what do you mean we need to practice our breathing? I've been doing it since the moment I was born." Yeah, but it's, it's true. And now, like, I, I'm trying to think back to that first team I ever came through at, at St Helens, and like, if someone said like, "Oh, after we score a try, we're gonna get in a huddle." I'm just going to do some breathing because you see all, like yeah. all the teams do it now. Warriors I, started, didn't they? I think the Stephen Warriors, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, I, but the science to back it up. But um, imagine taking that to like a team in the early 2000s and be like, "You do you what? You hot?" Like, <laughs> so yeah, change, change is funny, but I think um, there's been some really positive and massive game changes, and, and obviously the financial results that they speak they speak for themselves because. You know, you you speak to some that are sort of closer to the coal face, and we were we were up Shit Creek there for a little while, or we 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 were we were, we were quite far down Shit Creek when you know when the pandemic hit and um close to going going under, which would mm -hmm. have been obviously just not worth thinking about. Yeah, and a lot of sports in Australia are struggling at the moment. Um, yeah, I think. Uh, Sorry, go on. No, I was going to say, I think um, social media actually plays a big role in this now. I think because uh, the algorithms are so focused on your your top interests, you're going to see, like on my phone, I'll have a lot of rugby league content. Mm. And whereas with media in the past, you'd watch the sports news, for example, and every sport had a little spot. Yeah. Whereas now it's like I'm only consuming rugby league and a bit of NBA content. Mm. I love NBA. But my whole feed is that. So it's really hard for then other sports to crack yeah. in. It's making every fan, I think, a lot much more focused. So mm. if you're one of the sports that's not at the top, you're basically screwed. So in Australia, A AFL, NRL and cricket obviously dominate. Yeah. I think any of the other sports in Australia with the way that technology and media is now set up, they're in big trouble. Yeah, I think, you know what, I think you're right there. And l l it's probably not an angle that I've looked at is like looking at how those other sports are struggling. Mm. Like sports like rugby union teams basically going fol folding, insol yeah. insolvency. Melbourne I think. Rebels. Melbourne Rebels. Brumbies are in a bit of trouble as well financially. Yeah. Um, Obviously, netball's had their issues. Yeah, but rugby league, and AFL, cricket are going from strength to strength, and we've still got, we've still got, you know, plenty more work to do. Mm. But um, the signs are very positive, especially when you look at all the sports that are struggling in this um, particular time frame. We're just going to take a quick break to talk about friends of the show. AG1. Now, taking care of your health isn't always easy, but it should at least be simple. That's why for the last two years, I've been drinking AG1 
every single day, no exceptions. It's just one scoop mixed in water once a day, every day, and it makes me feel energized, focused, and it really takes away that mid-afternoon slump that I used to suffer from. It was awful, but now thanks to AG1, it doesn't happen. It delivers my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more. It's powerful, healthy habits that's also powerfully simple. Healthy aging shouldn't feel complicated. The thought of taking multiple supplements, pills, protein powders, etc., sounds exhausting. But just one daily scoop of AG1 covers my nutrient gaps and supports my mental and physical health without any hassle in just 60 seconds every morning i know i'm giving my body what it needs and setting up sustainable habits in the long run we are so grateful to have ag1 as a partner of the show and if there's one product that i had to recommend to elevate your health it's ag1 that's why we've partnered with them for so long so if you want to take ownership of your health start with ag1 try ag1 and get a free one year supply of vitamin d3 and k2 and five free ag1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com forward slash buy round that's drinkag1.com forward slash buy round check it out well let's do some predictions and jimmy because we had a lot of backlash last week from the preview that you were a bit sort of soft on the fence, you know, very pro Bulldogs, very anti every club. Um, I'm going to do them all apart from the bottom one. Top eight. Yeah, I don't You're not going to do your top eight? No, I can't. Okay, well, let's tell well, I've people. Not had, I've not had time to like properly prepare. Yeah, okay. Well, just in case anyone's listening hasn't got the run sheet in their hands, those which topics, they which they won't, those topics are the premiers, wooden spoon, play to watch and top eight. We're going to put a line through for now. Yeah. So you're not going to be doing your top eight for any other broadcasters or anything like that? No. Not for the NRL? Not going to do any ladder predictor for them? I am, but in a very different way, Charlie. Different way. Okay, yeah, right. We'll tune into NRL.com if you want to see mm. Jimmy's ladder. But who are, the, who are your premiers? Penrith. In, I've against changed. who in the grand final? I think it could be a repeat of last year's. Um, Yeah, I... I I just think, you know, a lot of people thought that this, these new changes, like we spoke about, have been brought in to like stop people like Isaiah Yo blocking Cleary, but you reckon they're worried about that, Penrith? Like, no, like they've got things, they've got their shit together that they can just come up with other plays. Like they're so far advanced, they don't have to spend time on the training paddock worrying about patterns and. Um, like styles of play, like they can go, you know what, we're going to spend an hour on how we're going to get our kicks away and where they position Nathan and Jack Cole. Like they're going to get even better. And I think the, the talk of those new rules, Penrith attack through their defense. So if you're coming out of your end and you want to kick and get downtown, mm. Well, you put your blockers in place, which you're now technically not allowed to do, or, and you go early, which you can't do. So Penrith are going to be at an even greater advantage when it's they attack through the... Dylan Edwards' style of play, bringing the Dil ball back as well. Well, look at that. You've got Dylan Edwards, Taruva, Toto. Oh, and like, you throw Taylor May into that as well. Yeah, like. and then when you think, well, how can you stop that? You go early, you get downtown and, and close their meters off. Well, you're not going to get that, or you put blockers in play. Mm. So I think it actually ad, ad puts an advantage with Penrith. And I also think the way that they won last year's grand final, it gives them that huge belief now that they can come back. Because I, I can't recall them being in a position like that where they've needed to. They've never needed to. You know, mm. that was always the argument. Like, well, what must if, you, if we get Penrith, right, and we get them in a bad spot, they've never been there before. So they panic and they won't know what to do which I kind of thought is the way to beat them. But then look what he did. Like, look what he did. Yeah, it was like unbelievable. Obviously teams will be on to that now. Like, it's not over. It's not over. Like, you're not going to fall into that trap. You might not fall into the trap, but I don't know if the Broncos slackened off that much. It's a grand final. Mm. But Cleary and the team did some pretty special things. It's a champion team filled with champion yeah. players. So... I, 
I don't know. And yeah, they've lost a couple, but I, I, I reckon they've got to be the, the front runners. I've convinced myself that I reckon Penrith could go again. I like it. They deserve that respect as well. They've won it three mm. years in a row. Like yeah. they should be everyone's tips for the premiers. Yeah. I, I, you know what previously said Brisbane, but I'm on, I'm on Penrith now. I like it. Yeah, you wouldn't spoon. Tigers. Tigers. Three mm. spoons in a row. Yeah. What makes you say that? I don't know, Tar Charlie. Just I'm not seeing massive improvement in them. New halves, Perry. I think it was probably better than what it what it was, but I think it'll take some some time. And with with the new coach there, he's going to need time. And yeah, just they looked okay against um, the Warriors last week in their trial. Yeah, I thought. Warriors have twelve men for like yeah, sixty minutes. That's a fair but look, point. that's a fair it's point, mate. It's trials. Yeah, Appy Coruscant looked in good nick though. I thought no, he's a great player. Yeah, they've got um. I, I know. I knew uh, you, you can. If whoever said you can make yeah, a case course, for no. like th this is why I hate these things. What happens to Benji though if they do get get the wooden spoon? If nothing. they're struggling, nothing, nothing, no pressure. No, so he's he's just going to be allowed. The, the, to the only way he goes is if they get spanked every week. Yeah, they can't really sack another coach. That'd be their third coach. Then. Bring Wayne Bennett in. Yeah. Oh well, I don't think he'd take that job. Well, maybe he would. Can't can't really go any worse, can you? Could look like an absolute hero. Uh, a player to watch. So you can sort of talk about this. You can take this how you want, but it's a player to watch that you're going to be keeping an eye on in 2024. Uh, Pappenhausen. Yeah, Ryan Pappenhausen. Interesting what he said where he's gained about, I think about 10 kilos, who's around that 80 kilo mm. mark, and he's got 95% top speed compared to when he was like 70 kilos. Yeah. I, I, I genuinely think... But he could be there or thereabouts for for Dalian. Another one, Jaden Campbell, how he goes mm. under Des Hasler. Might miss the first couple of weeks, Jaden Campbell as well, which is a shame. Yeah, for that's a shame. Yeah. Um, I like it, Ryan Pappenhausen. Pausing for effect there. <laughs> no, I'm pausing because I'm trying to think if there's anyone else that I've glaringly missed, which I probably have. Well, I mean, it's your player to watch. It doesn't matter who, if you've missed anyone else. It's just a player to watch. Yeah. You know? Don't overanalyze it. Don't overthink it, mate. Yeah. Thanks for doing your top eight again as well. Really, it's all right, mate. really insightful stuff. No, all good. I mean, part of me wonders what is the point in predicting a top eight at this stage? Mm. I mean, it's just. Well, well, I just remember last year you didn't have the Broncos in your top eight and they yeah, ended up making yeah. the grand final. I know. Didn't have the Warriors in there either, did you? Neither did you or anybody else. Uh, I saw it coming a bit. I saw it coming. Hmm. You the Oracle, weren't you? Yeah. Well, Charlie, I'm looking forward to this season. So am I, mate. You've you got Wade Graham with you next week as well. Yes. So for next week, for the Vegas week, yep. we've got a, a show Monday, Fly Tuesday. We'll do a midweek show with Wade over there. And then we'll do a very special, instead of the interview show, we're going to do a recap yep. of all things Vegas and how the experience was of the game and the venue and all that jazz. So really looking forward to Getting over there. Yeah. Um, Brian Fletcher is also on with you this Sunday as well. Yes, he is, which will be a great chat. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, it's the, the Vegas week. So, yeah, we'll be in Sydney Monday recording for uh, me and Wado talking about the trials and what we're looking forward to, mm. the do's and don'ts of Vegas. So watch out. Look forward to it. All right, Charlie, we'll uh, hopefully you get your visa in time. <laughs> We shall see. We we'll shall see. see. Pending TBC. Pending TBC. Yeah, maybe that midweek show over in Vegas won't happen. It'll be you in here with someone else <laughs> for midweek matters. I'll I hope get, not. Our listeners will be devastated. Oh, they'd be stoked. They'd be stoked. Mm. I'll go. I'll come in here with um. I don't know who, who's a big name. It's not going. Jeremy Lattimore. Jeremy Lattimore. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. the go-to. He's the first cab off the rank. I think Lattimore's got a podcast on the way potentially soon as well. Oh, I don't know. Good luck with that as well, Jeremy. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe you can talk about. It with him next week when you're on. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. We'll catch you soon. Bye.